So some crazy things have been going on for XRP and I think you might wanna hear this. And first things first, the price is not going down. Why is that surprising? Well, I, I think because of what I'm about to show you, most people would have expected the price to come down. But even that, I guess, is just a matter of perspective. But first, guys, make sure you press that like button. Let's slide right in. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> a couple of things have been happening, right? It's like click after click after click. A little bit ago, right, the SEC filed under seal its opening remedies related brief and supporting documents. These documents are not public yet, public redacted until March 26th. That is now, and something, as I said, pretty crazy has been revealed overnight. I, 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 it's pretty wild. As you will see when the SEC's brief is made public today, they asked the judge for a whopping $2 billion in fines and penalties. Two billion schmeckles our response will be, <laughs> will be filed next month but as we've all seen time and time and time again this is a regulator that trades in statements that are false mischaracterized and designed to mislead they stay true to form here rather than faithfully apply the law the SEC remains bent on wanting to punish and intimidate Ripple and the industry at large. We trust, however, that the court will approach the remedies phase fairly because this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, this is a, this is a pure piece of BS. Some quality level BS. Brad Gollinghouse, the CEO at Ripple, said, Gensler's SEC has repeatedly acted outside the law, not going unnoticed by judges admonishing the agency for gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress. If you do not know, little backstory, there was another case that the SEC had against a crypto company, and the judge there ruled that they were really heavily outside of the line. Again, following their own uh, words, gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress in the debt box case by basically assuming things, basically taking things way too far where they were not. I, yeah, I got it. I, I was fighting a mosquito. Sorry if I just blew it. Sorry, had it now. Um, where they were just acting way outside their authority. And for acting without faithful allegiance to the law, in the Ripple case, let's not also forget Gensler's lack of attention to Mr. SB Fraud. <laughs> I like that. The SEC plans to ask the judge for two billion schmeckles in a case that involved no allegations, let alone findings of fraud or recklessness. There is absolutely no precedent for this, and we will continue to expose the SEC for what they are when we respond to this. You are not... Serious, people. And again, the reason I find this so odd, right, is because if you start thinking about it, let's say Ripple did profit 700 mil from selling XRP to the public, uh, to, the, to the institutions. So let's hypothetically speaking say that that was with malicious intent. I would already say then let's consider this to be fraud because then they knew it was not allowed, but they did it anyway. But then the allegation and the story would be different. But right now, if this were to be the case that, you know, nobody could have really known that it was not allowed, but it's now set that it was not allowed. Why would it not be allowed? Well, because it could hurt the individual investors. They they couldn't have known and, and this and that. And, and that's what they're trying to protect the SEC because they're there for the people, right? So Ripple sold the institutions, which could be bad for the public, which is who the SEC is trying to protect. Where would this $2 billion come from, right? Because theoretically speaking, Ripple made $700 million profit off the institutions, right? From selling it, which would bad for the individual investors. Where now would this $2 billion or this $1.5 billion additional come from that would not hurt the public? Again, the, the basis line of it all is where is the public being protected in this whole arrangement anyway? Because in my humble opinion, we can only kind of see this as a bullish thing for XRP. But again, that all depends on perspective. But where would this be something nicer for individual investors? Where would the money come from? Uh, how many billions does the SEC Oh, Ripple and the XP community, when the lawsuit first was announced, it wiped away like 15 billion of the market cap, and that's not even exchanges delisting it. So when do we get some money for that back? And also, wasn't their complaint, initial complaint, a lot lower? Uh, like, for example, $1.3 billion in their initial legal complaint back in December? So why now, all of a sudden, after two out of three things have been turned down, are they asking for a whopping $2 billion? Again, I'm just a little bit in shock as to the unhinged number. Chris Larson also said, 
Gensler's SEC has become unhinged. This will not and should not go unnoticed in an election year. As the SEC single-handedly thinks it's above the law, dragging in the or dragging the US further behind the other G20 countries. And all of this makes you really think, what in the world is going on in these guys' minds? What in the world is going on in the background that we have no knowledge of at all? Again, you might consider me to be a bearish guy here, but I'm really questioning. What do we not know that gives the SEC the audacity to ask for $2 billion? There must be something, right? It can't outright be this blatantly obvious that they're just cheating the system. I don't think they're that stupid. There must be something that we are not seeing, which is the SEC's more argument for, 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 for trying to fetch all this money, right? There must be something. Anyway, I'd also like to come back and state one more thing. Many people in the comment section ask me if I'm still holding my XRP, and I'll say this. I have got less XRP than at the highest point, but the reason I still hold XRP is because I still think it will do well over a run. There are many negative sides to a coin, as has any of them. Seriously, I think if you've read as many pitches as I have and I've seen as many projects come by, you'll know that every single one of them has downsides and is ultimately quite a stupid proposition. Hypothetically speaking with Bitcoin, there's two or yeah, there's a lot of main arguments to make. Satoshi holds a very large percent of the supply. You don't know who found it, so you could wreck it at any time. You don't know who found it, so it could literally be flawed at its core. With Ethereum, the whole ETHgate situation, with BNB, the centrality issues, and the fact that it kind of stemmed off from an exchange, which has not been in the best position for a while. Solana, that again, it's F FTX related slash centralized issues. And I could just go on that list for a long while, where every single coin has its downsides and has some part that makes it less than optimal. And, and so does XRP. However, I kind of skipped that point most of the time thinking about all the bad sides and mostly just thinking about the positive side of what gains do I think it'll make. Again, if you bought consistently, you would have still made crazy amounts of profit in XRP because well, the price is up a lot from the bottom. It's just not done as well back towards its all-time high as some other coins like BNB have and Bitcoin has and some others have. Then again, keep in mind this number on the right where a lot of coins are not yet close to their all-time highs just quite yet. And so what I do is I focus on whatever has the highest probability of the most amount of gains. And how that comes to reality is, if I have a new opportunity and I don't have enough stable coin, I don't have enough money to cover it, or I, I don't wanna risk more stable coin, I will sell some other coin to buy it. Why? Because you have to keep balance. Everything in life, I think you guys will agree, is about balance. A lot of good things can be done. There's a price to pay, and that's kind of where the balance lies. Everything, I think, is balance. In this case here as well, let's say your portfolio, in my opinion, right, is skewed so far to one side that, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's proper to maybe start rebalancing in some areas. So you've got some in the real world asset class, some in this class, some in that, 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 that. And whenever I talk about this topic in an XRP video, I get people angry saying, Dusty, you should hold all your XRP. It's the most amazing thing in the world. It's just not yet to gain. And others who say, no, sell it all, go for something else. So whatever I say, I can't please everybody. But at the end of the day, I don't have that goal. The only goal I have is to share objectively, ah, sorry, actually, matter of fact, subjectively, what I think is best. And that's about it. If you agree on your own path, which is only holding XRP or not holding any at all, please do so. In hindsight, if you were holding only XRP, the last couple of months would have not been as profitable as with many other coins, which is why diversification is so beautiful. On the opposite side, nobody can see into the future knowing if whether or not holding only XRP will still be the most profitable choice because again, it. It, it can be, maybe in a few months from now, you'll notice, no, it would have actually been best to only hold this crypto. Only time will tell. But in my opinion, it's always worth putting money into different little baskets because crazy things happen. I mean, the SEC asking for $2 billion, it might, it might lead you to one side, which is you gotta go for this coin because you see how much they're trying to keep it down. It's worth it. On the opposite side, some people are like, you know what? It's too much freaking baggage. Even though perhaps it's it's molding into the clay that the best freaking thing ever. Too much thinking, too many eh, annoying things, blah, blah, blah. Perspective, balance, my opinion, just go for good baskets of coins, not just one. And at the end of the day, you'll be extremely happy. You could have been happier perhaps by making one or the other choice, but generally speaking, this is the easiest for the mind. And if you agree, make sure you press that like button. If you disagree, let me know down below. But. Yeah, you can uh, definitely count on the fact that I'm doing exactly what I'm saying, and that's about it.